Good morning. It's Thursday, the 15th of February. Our main story today. Figures released this morning will show how the UK economy has performed and whether it dipped into recession at the end of last year. The Office for National Statistics will publish its economic health check for the final three months of 2023 in the next hour. Nick Erdley is in Shrewsbury for us this morning. Nick, looks lively there, looks bright and lively there, but not necessarily a reflection of the economy. Good morning, Naga. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of experts who think that we're going to be talking in an hour's time about the UK having been in recession at the end of 2023. We're in Shrewsbury Market this morning to get some reaction to that, to speak to traders about how the economy feels for them. I think we all know whatever figures we get at seven o'clock that it's been a pretty tricky time with rising prices, with interest rates and rent going up as well. I think everybody's feeling the squeeze, but what this will tell us at seven is about the health of the economy. And if the UK did fall into recession, it's, it's bad news. It's a bad sense that things aren't going particularly well for the economy. If all services and goods, when you add them up, are shrinking in the country over the course of the year. Bad economic news, bad news for the Prime Minister as well, because you remember when he came up with his five pledges that he wanted to deliver, one of them was growing the economy. The Treasury will be watching this closely this morning to see what impact it has. Another potential knock-on impact is if the economy is getting smaller, the government has less money to spend on things like services. There's talk in the FT this morning, for example, that the Chancellor might be forced to, or as he would put it, forced to bring in more cuts to public services to bring in tax cuts at the budget. So look, there's a lot at play in these figures this morning. But fundamentally, it's going to give us an idea about where the economy's at, whether it got smaller at the end of last year. One health warning, if there is a recession, I don't think it's going to be a long or particularly deep one. It's likely to be short and the economy is unlikely to have shrunk by much. So that might be a silver lining. But we'll get those figures at seven o'clock and we'll be here in the beautiful Shrewsbury market this morning to explain a bit more, figure out what it means for everybody here and have a bit of a chat about the state of the economy. Nick, thank you very much. See you later on. Hello, good morning. You're watching Breakfast with Nagawan Chetty and Charlie State. Good morning. It's half past six. Now, in half an hour, the latest GDP figures will be released and they will give us an indication of the state of the UK economy. Uh, Nick's at a market for us in Shrewsbury this morning. Morning to you, Nick. So, I tell you, the thing about markets, like the one you are today, market traders, they know the price of stuff. They know what things, they, how much it costs to buy them in and how much it costs to sell. And today we get the bigger picture, if you like, that extrapolates everything that goes on in places like that. Yeah, I mean, you're spot on, Charlie. This is a, this is a busy market. It's busy this morning already, actually. There's, there's a lot going on. And it's been busy over the past few months. It's the, the UK's favourite market two years in a row believe it or not. And, and, and things are good here, but the, the broader question that everybody's asking today is the state of the UK economy. And let me run through some of the context of those figures that we're going to get at seven, because the economy as a whole hasn't been in a great place. We got the figures for the third quarter uh, a few months ago, and they showed that the economy had shrank by 0.3%. It's not a massive amount, but it matters to everybody because it's a sign of how the economy is doing. And those figures we get at seven o'clock from the Office for National Statistics, if they show that in the final three months of 2023, the economy shrank again, that would meet the definition of a recession. And that becomes a, a big deal because it gives us a sense that the economy isn't doing well. It gives us a sense politically that Rishi Sunak isn't meeting that pledge to grow the economy, one of the big promises he made to the public just over a year ago. I mean, look, it won't be a surprise to a lot of people that the economy is in a difficult place. We all see it in our pockets with rising prices. We got those figures that Nina was talking about on breakfast yesterday showing that inflation is still at 4%. It's, it, prices aren't going up by as much as they were, but they are still going up and that's having 
an impact on everybody's pockets. And if you've got a mortgage, things are pretty tricky too, because interest rates are still up at 5.25%. That means people are paying more for their mortgages. That has a big knock-on impact for things like rent as well. So the economic picture is tricky, but let's figure out what it's like here in Shrewsbury with some traders who've kindly come to join us this morning. Bethany, morning. I know you were just getting things ready in the bakery there. Uh -huh. But tell me, what, what's, it, what's it been like here recently? Is it busy? Yeah, yeah, busier than ever, I would say. I think um, winning the Favourite Market um, Award again, that's increased trade. Um, and I guess, uh, from my point of view, everybody needs bread and cakes, so... Yeah. They yeah. do, and we might be coming over later to get some <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Livy, I know you specialise in, in cookware, but the big question we're asking this morning is what it was like at the end of 2023. Was it, was it busy for you? Were people spending as much as normal? Absolutely buzzing in here because everything's under one roof. The footfall was incredible. I love being in here. Yeah, it's brilliant. Good. All right. And Warwick, you're, you're a butcher. What, what's your kind of sense of the next few months? Are you confident about the economic picture? Are people still spending money with you? Well, definitely here. It's especially since winning the um, Britain's Favourite Market Awards. It's busier than ever. Things are still moving, moving well. There's so much under one roof and so many interesting local small businesses. So it's quite an exciting place to be here. Are you worried at all, though, that people are starting to, or not starting to, but continuing to, to save a bit more cash, aren't spending as much as they used to? Are people buying as much as they used to from you? No, it's, it's tricky. You can definitely see people don't have as much money in their pockets. So, you know, you have to try and be just that little bit more competitive. Um, but it's, it's, it's a bit tricky. Prices have risen so much and you can see that people are struggling. But it's not all the time. You know, there's, there's still people coming in. There's still locals and people are still, still spending. So it's, there's still a trade here. There's still very much a good trade within this market. All right, economy still moving, Morik. Thanks a lot. Thanks to Libby Thank and Bethany as well. Thanks, guys. So, yes, look, Naga, Charlie, 7 o'clock, we get those figures. Number to watch out for is whether in the final three months of 2023, the economy got smaller. If it did, that would be a recession. There'd be a lot of questions for the government and for all of us about the economy. Yeah, a lot of questions, Nick. One of them being, which cake will you go for uh, when you go to the cake store? I've not had a proper look yet. I'm just looking over behind the camera there. There's, there's a big selection, so I'll keep you posted. I'll have a proper look and uh, do some research. Don't forget you're coming back to see us, so don't come back in empty-handed. Is that a hint? No, no. <laughs> what, what made you have that idea? Good morning. It's Thursday the 15th of February. Now, in the last few minutes, official figures have shown that the UK economy has entered recession. Yes, these are the figures from the Office for National Statistics, reporting that the economy contracted by 0.3% in the final three months of 2023. Nick Erdley is in Shrewsbury for us this morning. And, Nick, I know you're in a marketplace there. They know um, what sells and the price of things. This is about the wider economy, and it's a significant moment. Yeah, morning to you, Charlie. It is a significant moment. Things are pretty busy here. You can probably hear some of the activity in the background, but the economy as a whole is in a pretty tricky place. The UK is in, officially, a recession because in the last six months of the year, the economy shrank. There were three months between July and September where it went down just a small bit. 0.1% was the percentage that the economy shrank. But the statistics we've just had published in the last few seconds are worse, I think, than most people were expecting. The economy shrank another 0.3% in the last three months of the year. That includes the busy Christmas trading period and things like that. So it paints up a pretty difficult picture, actually, for where the UK is, both in terms of the economy as a whole, that have an impact on public spending, on what the government can and can't do, have a big political impact, which we can talk about a bit later as well. So remember, Rishi Sunak promised to deliver economic growth. Things are going the other way. I want to bring in an expert on some of this stuff, Chris Breen. Morning to you, Chris, an economist from the Centre for Economic and Business Research. Chris, put this in a bit of context for us. It is a recession, but how bad is it? 
Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you're right that it is now a recession and today's data was slightly worse than we expected. Um, but we do think that actually this will be the end of the recession. Remember, this is backwards looking data. It's looking at the, the last few months of 2023. So we could be out of it already. I think, yeah, most of, uh, economists, uh, we think that uh, we are already out of that recession. And if you look at the sort of, you know, 0 0.1, 0.3%, this is a very shallow recession um, by the sort of um, the, the uh, if you look at the previous recessions that we've had, uh, which were much more significant. And shallow basically means that the economy isn't shrinking by as much as it has in the past. Exactly, yeah. So when people hear recession, they probably think of COVID, they probably think of the 90s, they think of the financial crash. But it's important to point out this is different, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think this was, uh, I mean, everyone knows the reasons why this recession happened. It was the cost of living crisis. For a lot of last year, people's uh, were, wages weren't keeping up with the um, increases in prices of the goods and services that they buy every day. Um, but uh, that has actually uh, changed around for the last couple of months of, of, of 2023. Uh, wages are now um, rising faster than, than, than prices. Um, it actually looks like over Christmas, people were taking the opportunity uh, to rein in spending a little bit. Really interesting. Chris, thank you for that analysis. We're going to speak to you a bit later and get some more thoughts once we've had a chance to dig properly into the numbers. But Charlie, Naga, it's official. At the end of 2023, the UK entered a recession. As we were just hearing from Chris, it's not historically as bad as some of the famous recessions where the economy took a massive tumble. But it is bad news. It will have an impact both economically and I'm sure politically as well. Uh, Nick. Hello, you're watching Breakfast with Naga Manchetti and Charlie State. Good morning. 7.31 is the time. Now, in the last half hour, British Gas has announced profits of £750 million for 2023. That's ten times the amount it made in the previous 12 months. Let's speak now to our business editor, Simon Jack. Uh, morning to you, Simon. So morning, it's morning, one of Lego. those moments when we uh, think about those numbers, they sound huge, and then we hear that 10 times the figure from the previous figure. Put this in some kind of context for us. Yeah, on the face of it, Charlie, people will say, blimey, uh, they made 10 times the amount of money they made the previous year, 750 million compared to 772 million the year before. But there are some distorting factors in here. 500 million of that 750 was due down to a one-off adjustment where the uh, regulator off gem allowed them to recoup some of the losses they'd made in previous years when the price cap meant that uh, all uh, energy retailers were selling either break even or at a loss so they said you can have some of that money back so if you take that out then it would have been something more like 250 million nevertheless uh, some big numbers there um, as a group remember uh, British Gas is owned by Centrica now that also extracts oil and gas out of the North Sea and elsewhere. Now, they made tons of money in 2023, in 2022, sorry, when you had that massive spike in oil and gas prices after the invasion of Ukraine. That's come down. So the group as a whole saw its profits fall by 17%. But nevertheless, some big numbers at British Gas, which, has, which serves 7.5 million customers in the UK. So, Simon, a couple of things. I mean, a lot of people when they hear these numbers, and as you say, uh, they're sometimes hard to hear for people. They're thinking, well, why don't they just cut my bills? Uh, they're making so much money, my bills should be smaller. How about that? Well, as I say, 500 million of that was an adjustment by the regulators. So if you're going to blame anyone for that money, for that incident, you should probably blame off gem. The other thing is, a lot of people say, if they're making all this money uh, getting gas out of the ground, why don't they use that to subsidise our bills? They're actually not allowed to do that. It's illegal for Centrica to sell British gas, uh, oil and ga sorry, gas, at a cheaper price than it would sell to anyone else. So they're not, they're not allowed to cross subsidise in that way, because it wouldn't be fair on some of the energy retailers who don't have a big gas extraction business as well. So that's one way to think about it. I think the, as I say, I think the criticism, if if there is some, should come in for the regulator who, say, allowed them to recoup some of the losses they made during the price cap when they were basically selling energy at a loss. So there's, there's the way, that's where I would direct some of those questions. Simon, you'll be well aware that some, sometimes uh, questions are asked about uh, the bosses of these organisations, how much money they make, and sometimes those can feel a bit uncomfortable. So you can take us in a minute to what we know about the figures now. We spoke uh, recently to Chris O'Shea, who's the chief executive of Centrica. He was with us on the sofa here on Breakfast. And he talked about his salary last year. He earned 4.5 million. And we asked him about those figures. 
it's um, it's a huge amount of money. I am incredibly fortunate. I don't set my own pay. That's set by a remuneration committee. Um, and the number that's the first bonus that I've taken in my time in Centric. And the number of years I had given up bonuses because of hardships that customers were facing. I thought it was right that we put a lot of our money, a lot of our profits into supporting customers. Um, but it's you can't justify a salary that uh, of that size. It's, um, Can you say that again? You cannot. You, say you, you can't justify. No, you can't because it's a huge amount of money to to anybody looking at this. It's a huge amount of money. So, Simon, that was Chris O'Shea uh, speaking to us about last year's salary. And you can tell by the way he was talking about it. You know, it's, it's not a comfortable. He was quite open about it yeah. uh, in terms of how, what the numbers were. Do we know his salary this time around? I'm trying to establish that as we speak, whilst, I, whilst you were playing that clip from that memorable interview you did with him. Um, uh, now, it should be said that um, anyone who worked in the energy business in 20, uh, for the year 2022, because you had this enormous spike in energy prices, people like Shell, BP, others made tons of money, probably more money than they'll ever make as companies. Uh, you know, if they were certainly record profits, I doubt they'll ever be beaten. So there was a lot of pay knocking around. Now, the group this year has actually seen its overall profits fall by about 17 percent, its underlying profits. So I would expect Chris O'Shea's um, pay to come down from four and a half million pounds. But it will still be a big number. I think, you know, he fit, clearly feels uncomfortable when he knows that people are going through um, desperately difficult times trying to pay those energy bills. Some of the support that we all got for paying energy bills uh, has been gradually phased out. The good news is, is that any prices have come down a little bit. They ticked up just a bit in January when the energy price cap was just nudged up a bit, but they are a lot lower than they were uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but I'm, sh I'm sure next time he's on the sofa, you will ask him about his pay and he will um, probably feel pretty uncomfortable about it still. Yeah, I mean, to be fair to him, Simon, and you saw that interview too, he, he was quite open about it. I mean, he, he, he did say, I don't set the salary. You yeah. know, it, it, that's, that's uh, deemed appropriate by other people. It yeah. uh, doesn't change it sitting uncomfortably in relation to the hardship people are feeling at home. Yeah, it's a difficult one, executive pay, isn't it? Because you ask the shareholders, and by the way, millions of people are shareholders in Centrica. You remember when British Gas was privatised all those years ago, they still have hundreds of thousands of small shareholders. And you ask the shareholders of the company, you say, do you want a good chief executive? Everyone goes, yes. So, do, you know, are you prepared to pay the going rate for a good chief executive? Everyone says, yes. When the actual numbers come out, they say, blimey, we didn't want to pay him that much. And so it's a difficult thing because it's kind of set by the market, if you like. There's a sort of going rate for chief executives of big companies. Um, and Chris Sochet, I think, is pretty unusual in the level of discomfort he shows. And he often talks about comparing it to his mum. And he, and he had, seems to have some genuine sympathy for people who are, are hard up. But as you say, he doesn't set it. It's set by um, people who represent the shareholders on various committees, the remuneration committee. Um, so we'll see where his pay comes out. I've just asked them to send me what they think it will be. And if I get it in the next two seconds, I'll let you know. But it's still going to be a big number. Just waiting, Simon. Just giving you a moment. <laughs> no, it's not there, is it? No, we'll no, come back. No, it's not there. All right. Okay, Thanks for watching, Simon. Uh, Simon that. Jack's our business editor, just taking us through those figures uh, from... Good morning. It's Thursday the 15th of February. Figures released now, recently in the last hour show that the UK economy is in recession. The Office for National Statistics reports the economy contracted by 0.3% in the final three months of 2023. Let's go to Nick Early, who's in Shrewsbury for us. Uh, Nick, rather appropriately, you're, you're in the market this morning, and uh, that's one of those places where you think about the, the prices of things, what it's costing, and now we know this official statistic, the word recession. Uh, this is for the last six months of, of last year. Put this in some kind of context. Morning to you, Charlie. Yeah, it's interesting because you speak to the traders around the market here in Shrewsbury and they all say business is pretty good. People are still coming in and spending money, even if they're watching the pennies a bit more. But what these figures this morning do is they give us a picture of the economy as a whole and it's, it's bad news. As you say, it's official now that the UK at the end of 2023 did enter recession. The figures we got this morning about the last three months of the year were worse than most economists were expecting. We'll go over the details in a few seconds. I've, I've got an expert here to, to help us understand it a bit better. But what I think is, is important here is, firstly, the cost of living's had a big impact. 
most of us have got a bit less money to spend. That has an impact on the economy as a whole. Interest rates have had an impact as well because people are spending more money on mortgages or on rent. They've not got as much money to spend in the shop. So it's bad economic news. It's bad news for the government as well. Remember that Rishi Sunak had those five promises. One of them was to grow the economy. That is clearly not happening. We've had a statement from the Chancellor in the past few minutes where he says that, well, he's putting it down to interest rates and saying that inflation was the priority and to bring down inflation, you put interest rates up and that means it's not surprising that the economy shrank a bit. But Labour say, look, this just shows that the government's plan to grow the economy is in tatters. So there's a big battle over that going on already. I'm going to bring in Chris, who I've got here. Chris Breen, morning again to you, Chris. You are an economist from the Centre for Economic and Business Research. Yes, correct. I've got that right. Help us understand this a bit. How bad are these figures? How worried should people be? So today's data was uh, surprisingly bad. Uh, we were expecting minus 0.1%. Uh, it came in at minus 0.3%. Um, but it's important to remember, I guess, two things. Firstly, this is a very shallow recession, um, particularly if you think about previous recessions that we've had, you know, COVID um, and, and the financial crisis. But it's also important to remember that this is backwards looking data. So it's, it's looking at the last few months of uh, 2023. Um, we do think that um, the recession has stopped then and we will come out of the recession um, at the start of 2024 um, because... Uh, this is one of the interesting things about this data absolutely. that it's, it's a few months old so we might be out of it already. Yeah, we, we, do, we do think that is the case, yeah. Let me ask you, I know you've been pouring through the numbers and trying to figure out what it all mm. means. What's this down to? What parts of the economy are really struggling? So I think as a whole, what's largely been happening is, is, is household consumption has been down. The amount of uh, money that people have been spending is down because um, it won't be a surprise to anyone uh, listening at home. Uh, you know, cost of living crisis has, has impacted people. Um, the, uh, the rate at which uh, prices of the goods and services that people buy has outstripped the increase in wages that people have had. Um, whilst that has actually changed a little bit in the last few months, um, nonetheless it looks as though over Christmas in particular people were taking that opportunity to rein back uh, spending. Um, interestingly, something in the data as well is that uh, exports fell quite sharply towards the back end of last What's year. What's that? Is that Brexit? Um, I think it's mostly because um, it's important to remember that the sort of inflation wave uh, is not just impacted us, but it's impacted a lot of the world as well. So uh, particularly across Europe um, and, and other parts of the world, uh, they've been struggling with these same uh, effects that we have had as well. So they are buying less of our goods and services. Chris, that's really helpful. Chris Breen, thank you for helping us understand that a bit better. So yes, look, Charlie and Naga, bad figures for the economy, uh, another sign of how difficult things have been. I think we all knew it already, didn't we? We all see it in the inflation figures, rising prices, rising mortgage costs, rising rent. Everybody knew that the economic picture was tricky, but now we have those official statistics that the UK was in recession at the end of last year. Yes, Nick, stay where we are for just a moment, because uh, whilst you've been chatting, we've heard from the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. Let's hear what he's had to say. We always expected growth to be weaker while we prioritise tackling inflation. That means higher interest rates. And that's the right thing to do because you can't have long-term healthy growth with high inflation. But also for families, uh, when, the, when there's a cost of living crisis, when the cost of their weekly shop is going up, their energy bills are much higher, it's the right thing to do. The underlying picture here is an economy that is more resilient than most people predicted. Inflation is coming down. Real wages have been going up now for six months. And if we stick to our guns, independent forecasters say that by the early summer, we could start to see interest rates falling. And that will be a very important relief for families with mortgages. So, Nick, uh, I hope you could hear that where you are. Uh, but it, it sounds like the Chancellor is... He's trying to paint the picture, essentially, that things are improving, even though these figures uh, paint a slightly different picture. Yeah, I mean, look, there's no doubt at all, Charlie, these are bad figures for the government. They are going to be whacked with them by opposition parties in the next few months who say, you promised growth, you delivered the opposite. 
I mean, it's not surprising that the Chancellor's come out and said, look, we've got a plan and we think it's going to work. The question that the government's been facing is whether people see that in their pockets, whether they see it in the, the broader economic picture. And given the inflation figures yesterday, which showed that the fall in inflation was was had stopped basically given these recession figures i think this is going to be a, a tricky day for the chancellor now for the moment thanks with nagaman chatty and charlie state good morning to you so we've had the latest gdp figures they were released around seven this morning the uk economy is in recession nick is taking a look at the implication of all of this he's at a market in shrewsbury and can run through the details nick i suppose the the headline is yes recession the question is is it as bad as was predicted well, it's actually a bit worse the figures we got this morning hi naga were slightly worse than most economists were predicting so this is for the final quarter of 2023 the last three months of 2023 includes that busy christmas period where shops are are normally doing pretty well the economy shrank by not point three percent and as i say economists thought it was going to shrink but not necessarily by that much so it's definitely bad news and it's particularly bad news because it's the second three month period in a row where the economy has got smaller and that's the definition used to determine when we're in recession so the uk at the end of 2023 was in recession now there are some big questions about how deep the recession is, how long it's going to last, how much, how, by how much the economy is going to shrink. And the consensus is that it's not going to last long. We might be out of it already, actually, because these figures are for uh, until the end of 2023. And that it's not going to be that bad a contraction for the economy. But it's still a recession. And, and I've been having a look at some of the numbers and there are particular bits that make for pretty grim reading, actually. And, GDP economic output per head, so for each person in the country, has gone down 0.7% over the course of the year. That sounds pretty complicated, but it pretty much means that the economy isn't in a great place and there are more people, so the amount of economic output is lower per person. So not good news. I mean, I suspect for a lot of people at home, this won't be a surprise because we all see it every day, don't we? Inflation, we got the figures yesterday, still up at 4%, so prices are still going up. There's still a squeeze on household incomes, still high interest rates, meaning mortgages are higher, rent is higher as well. So the, the broad economic picture, frankly, isn't great. But let's have a chat with some of the traders here, actually, because they will be able to give us a sense for how things are looking in Shrewsbury. Morning to you all. Let me just grab my mic here so that you can tell me what's going on. John, let me start with you. You've got the fruit and veg stall just a few metres from where we are just now. Have you noticed people's habits changing? Um, well, I say I'm the third generation of the family in here. Uh, I remember the market from the 70s uh, onwards. And any time there's been a recession, the market has always been good. It's always helped people have come in the market for good value. Have uh, things changed, though? Recently, I'd say we've changed for the better still again. Uh, the, the trade's been, been wonderfully good. It's a unique experience in here. People can come in, get good value and a good time while they're here. So it's right. good. Yeah. Angela, you've got the card stall at the other side of the market. Have you noticed people changing the way they're spending money? Are people looking at prices a bit more? Uh, yes, I have noticed a lot, and this last year has been a lot better for us. Uh, I've noticed while we've got the, all the extra cafes, it's brought younger people in, so they're all spending, and, yeah, it's been my best year, really. So they're so buying cards? Happy. They are indeed, yes. Busy yeah. for Valentine's Day? Yes, yes, yeah, we're very busy. Excellent. Yeah. Tom, hello, this is your stall as well. Yes, we can yes. see some of your very attractive-looking cakes yeah. in the background. <laughs> we might need a sugar boost at some point. Um, Tom, tell me, you know, we know that people are spending money on services, yeah. but have you noticed things changing? Yeah, I've, I've noticed a big increase uh, January and February, uh, busiest, busiest months we've had. Was it quieter at Christmas time? I'd say so for me. Uh, so January and February are really starting to pick up and hopefully it, it stays that way. It's one of the interesting things about these figures that some of the economists think this recession might already be over because the economy might be growing already but that was interesting did you feel towards the end of last year there was a bit of a slowdown a uh, slight slowdown yeah i thought it would be busier during christmas but uh, it's definitely increasing now weirdly in january and february so right, hopefully it's, it stays that way 
Tom, brilliant. Angela and John, thank you very much for your time as well. So look, guys, that's a bit of a picture of, of what's going on here about the, the economic situation in Shrewsbury. I'm pleased to say I've got some butter buns to bring back tomorrow as well. So there'll be a, a nice breakfast for us all from, from Shrewsbury. It's, I'm told it's a local delicacy. It's very popular. It's the most popular thing in one of the stalls over there. So something to keep us going tomorrow. How do we eat it? What do we eat it with? It's just a roll, I think, like a, a cake or a... You guys will be able to confirm this for me. These butter buns, you just eat it like a roll. You just eat yeah, it as it yeah. With a cup of tea. The, the, the intuitive way. They're very sweet and sticky. They're very sweet and sticky, I'm told. Ah. But they have ah. been, I've been promised that they're very good for, for a morning snack. Nice. Perfect. Look forward to that. Thank you very much. See you in the office.